In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The theme from this morning's gospel lesson is one that we probably all fall prey to at one time or another. We're, we're guilty of it, in other words. And Christ uses this parable today to address our tendency to make excuses for whether it be our conduct, our lifestyle, our attitude, our everyday existence. And the theme of this morning's gospel reading is one of excuses. There is a wise saying, he who really wants to do something finds a way. He who doesn't finds an excuse. And I would think that all of us fall into that category at some time um, or another. We all know excuse makers, people who could accomplish much in this world if they were as creative at their tasks as they are at making excuses for not tackling their tasks in the first place. And this is the lesson if we wish to go home and read the gospel that's in your bulletin this morning and that we read during the Divine Liturgy. It is the gospel from St. Matthew referred to as the parable of the talents. And to recap, this is a bit of the story that we heard. A wealthy man was going on a journey and before he left, he gave one of his servants five bags of gold. And this servant used his five bags and made five bags more, totaling 10. And his master was exceedingly pleased with him. The master gave another servant two bags of gold. And he also invested his gold wisely and he earned two bags more for a total of four. But the third servant was given just one bag of gold. And this servant was fearful. So what did he do? He hid the bag that he was given in the ground instead of investing it as his master had hoped. So when the master returned, he had only the original bag of gold to show for his stewardship when the master returned. Now listen to this man, this servant's reasoning or we can call excuse making. He said, Master, I know you to be a hard person, harvesting where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid of you and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you, the one bag of gold that you gave me. And as we heard in this gospel parable, his master would have none of this, his man, this man's excuses. He replies, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I harvest where I have not sown, gather and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money at the very least on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Now, if we understand this gospel that Christ is telling us this morning, it's apparent that the master was not happy with that one servant. But what is Jesus trying to say to us in this parable? What practical wisdom can we gain from this? This probably is a good place to begin to try to clarify Jesus' position on this. Jesus is telling us that we alone are responsible for how we live our lives. And you and I are responsible alone for the choices we make in life. Now that's not a very popular viewpoint nowadays. We are a generation of excuse makers and we live in a society of entitlement. And that's something that we feel that we should be given freely and without condition. 
Nevertheless, real life doesn't condone that. Life may be unkind to us, or we may be incredibly lucky, but still, ultimately, we are the ones who are solely responsible for how we respond to life's up and downs. We are in charge of our lives. And the message of this morning's gospel reading is one that we all ultimately are responsible for and how to deal with our lives. Our parents are not responsible for the choices we make when we grow older. Our spouse is not responsible for the choices we make. And the universe is not responsible for the choices we make. We alone are responsible for how we live our lives. But what do we do? We look to blame others. Some people have this perception of God that if things go our way, then God must be with us. He must like us. And if things don't go our way, then God has forgotten us. He's forsaken us. Some of us view our relationship with God to the children's game with the petals on a flower. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. But God's love is nothing like that. It's not a game. God's love never fails. But how many of us search him out? We always count on that. The one constant in this world is that God loves us. So even if your current circumstances are not all that great, do not let go of that truth. We need to remember that God loves us. Why does the church say this, you may ask? Well, God has made an investment in us, and that's the meaning of this parable. God has given us certain talents that he wants us to use, that he wants us to use his glory. Everything we are and everything we have, whether it be opportunities or our energy, intelligence, our relationships, everything in life that is meaningful to us, including our financial resources, is a gift from God. We don't do anything without God's willingness to give it to us. Life is not to be squandered. But many of us only look up God's telephone number when something goes wrong. Neither are we to hide a light under a bushel. As Orthodox Christians, we are instructed to live boldly and creatively and in the knowledge that we are the children of God and his favor shall be with us forever. And in this morning's gospel reading, my dear friends, this third steward who dug a hole and buried the one bag of gold that was entrusted to him had a complete misunderstanding of his master's character. He saw his master as cruel and vindictive. And maybe sometimes you and I do too. God is not a cruel judge who vigilantly watches to catch us doing something wrong. That's not what God is here for. That's not what God does. God is a loving parent cheering us on, hoping to see us make our life count for something wonderful. And finally, this brings us to just one more thing that I'd like to say this morning. Today is a good day to begin investing your life in something that will make a real difference. Whether you're young, middle-aged, or elderly, today is a good day to begin investing your life in something that will make a real difference for your soul. If you are the one who has been figuratively burying your gold in the ground, now is the greatest time to begin investing your life in something wonderful. Jesus gave his life in order that we realize that something wonderful is what he is about. 
and he, speak, he spoke when he walked the earth about the kingdom of heaven. And he calls his followers to invest in that kingdom. He's given us good minds and sound bodies. He's given us all the opportunities and resources that we really will ever need. And he asks us this question. What simple, easy, concrete steps will you take in the next 24 hours to move that forward? How many of us desire to seek that challenge or we wish to remain and wallow in the gutter? God tells us over and over and over in our services that he loves us. And God has made an enormous investment in us. And God wants us to invest our life in something wonderful. So will we follow the path of that third servant who didn't do anything when his master told him, I want you to do something with the funds that I'm giving you? Or will we follow the first two servants who used the gifts God gave them and offered back to him in gratitude and faith? That, my dear friends, is the question before us today, and that's the theme of this morning's gospel reading. God gives us something to work with, and we are told to go out and multiply. But the third servant was so terrified by his master. And who is the master that this gospel reading is talking about? It's God. And God said, you did, you did nothing with what I gave you. And so Jesus, this morning in this parable, talks about a man who was given a gift. But what did he do? He buried it in the ground. So we need to sit back and we need to think maybe on our way back home today, what gifts has God given us? Sure, we can complain about all of the pitfalls and shortfalls and everything else that, we, that come up easily to think about, but what about the good things? You and I are responsible for our lives. God has given us those opportunities. What did we do with them? Circumstances rarely determine our destiny, but instead character determines our destiny. So let's not look for excuses why we are not doing what God has called us to do. Because if we really think about it and look deep into our hearts, we'll understand that most of us can do better. And as our Bible passage told us this morning, the master will be pleased if we do. Amen.